Have you struggled with what to focus on in your guitar playing? Maybe you're interested in so many different styles and techniques that it feels like it's hard to make progress on any of them. Well, I've struggled with that problem many different times in my uh, lifetime in my guitar playing journey. And today I want to share my advice and my opinion on when I think it is a good idea to broaden our focus and focus on a bunch of different things musically. And when I think it's a good idea to do the very opposite and narrow our focus to get the most out of one thing and feel like we're actually making progress. So we'll talk about the benefits of having a well-rounded, versatile foundation of guitar skills and knowledge of knowing what's out there is good. But after a certain point, it's a good idea to go really deep on one thing, uh, one area of study, one type of playing. And of course, I will share why. Reflecting on this has helped me many times, including recently, and I'm shifting my focus on my YouTube channel, in my business, sound guitar lessons, in my own practicing. And I'll share about that at the end of the episode here. Let's get into it. I'm Jerry Borkowski from soundguitarlessons.com, where I teach musicianship skills on the guitar, like jazz guitar, chord voicings, improvisation, theory, fretboard clarity, technique, arranging chord melodies, stuff like this, so we can express ourselves more freely on the instrument. If you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe. I post new lesson videos every week. I'll start by sharing my own past experience on the guitar. I'm one of these people that can get into anything. I can get inspired by almost anything and, and find the enjoyment in working on it, especially creative stuff or stuff that you can get really engaged in. So this is a blessing and a curse, right? There's no shortage of inspiration, but there can be this scattered feeling or it's hard to get go deep on one thing long enough to see big results on it because there's always kind of a shiny object in the distance somewhere else and you can uh, bounce around between a bunch of different topics. So in my past, when I was younger playing guitar, I was uh, really into songwriting and I was in a rock band that I really loved and I wrote all the songs and this was just my favorite thing in the world. I was also taking jazz guitar lessons all through those years, these are like my teenage years, and playing jazz in like the public school system, uh, middle school, high school, jazz. Um, so I had these, these two things going on that I was into. And when I got to college, I majored in classical guitar and jazz guitar and uh, was still writing songs and into kind of recording and stuff like that. So it was really uh, difficult to balance all of these. In fact, I was I was kind of constantly having a crisis of what's more important to me at any one time, classical guitar, jazz guitar, classical guitar, even just in college. And, and uh, that's a hard thing. And it was really hard for me, and it still is, to let go of or kind of give up on something enough to see uh, better results and better gains and more kind of more of a rewarding experience in one area of playing or one area of study. So from after college, professionally, um, this versatility actually benefited me quite a bit because I was able, able to play gigs of all varieties. So I was able to play gigs and teach very successfully because anybody that came to me with all kinds of uh, different interests, I was I'm pretty excited about helping them. And um, that continued to nurture and feed uh, this versatility that I had, all the different types of students that wanted to learn. I was teaching some people exclusively classical. I was some teaching some people exclusively jazz. I was teaching some people just a bunch of song learning, some people all, all kinds of things. And I enjoyed uh, having, getting to use this variety of all of these skills that I worked on over time. And then gigs, same thing, because I could kind of accommodate any situation. I could play in cover bands and rock bands and wedding bands and stuff like that, or play little classical gigs or background jazz gigs or whatever. So I was able to piece together um, a living as a musician. This is pretty much my all of my 20s. I just turned 40 to give you context for that. Uh, so all my 20s, this is kind of my life, just constantly, tons of stuff. And being in a lot of groups, saying yes to a lot of things that didn't even pay money, but just to play. I had rehearsals and gigs all the time. So this versatility was uh, was going on. I think it's very beneficial for all guitarists to intentionally, for us to expose ourselves to as much of what is out there as possible. This is easy to say for beginners. If you're a beginner or still consider yourself at a beginner level, then getting exposure and feeling like you have uh, a foundation and a well-rounded 
um, sense of what is out there and it, being able to touch on, dabble with a little bit each style and technique that's out there because getting exposed to these things uh, is what helps us find what we might have the most uh, rewarding, exciting, you know, enjoyment with in the future if we do the next step, which is going deep, uh, which I'm going to talk about in a second. So this exposure, and we think of this a lot of times with kids, right? Like, yeah, they don't know what they don't know. Like, let's expose them to things. Try this, try this, try this, try this. But I think this applies to all of us, and we can only know for ourselves. If we feel like we are, if we're starting out, or if we feel like we're a beginner, or even if we've been playing for 10 years, and we feel like, I'm really missing a lot. I don't even know what I'm missing. I feel like I'm just spinning my wheels. And I think that uh, intentionally exposing ourselves to uh, a wide range of guitar topics and taking it very seriously is the thing to do. Um, and I shared about how that was beneficial for me. Um, and this is why recently I created a beginner guitar course that I actually called the best beginner guitar course, just kind of for fun, but also because I wanted to make it the best beginner guitar course. The point of that whole course is just going through every to topic, every category. It's very, very thorough course to say, hey, here's everything you need. If you if you graduate from this, you're not a beginner anymore. You're an intermediate. You can kind of find what you like here and go deeper on something later. I'm not trying to plug the course, but just saying that's, I made that because of this exact uh, philosophy here that I have, that I think it's beneficial for any guitarist, no matter what we think we're interested in, to get exposed to all that stuff. Because we, again, we don't know what we don't know. And getting that exposure can help us help help fill in the gaps. It can help inform what we do in the future. And it can help us go towards something that we absolutely love that we didn't even know about. Um, so that would be my advice for any of us. And again, we can only know for ourselves. It can We can go through phases of this too, where we say, this is just what feels right to me right now. I want to intentionally... Uh, have this broad range of what I'm working on. Intentionality is the key because the trap of focusing on so many different things and feeling scattered with it is what happens when we are not doing it on purpose. We're not like, no, this is my homework right now to just kind of take it in. Whereas if we think we're specializing or think we're really trying to rocket ahead or get progress or we have a certain goal in mind, but we're getting distracted from that goal by being... Uh, enticed by all these other topics, techniques, you know, things to work on and not making progress on the thing that we think we actually want. That's where we have to be careful, right? There's no right or wrong answer for anyone. This is all just my opinion. You can do anything you want or need. I'm just sharing this stuff um, if it's helpful for you. If you're someone that feels like I do have a solid foundation, I do understand kind of at a beginner level, most of the stuff that's out there guitar wise, well, then that's when I think it might be the very best thing to go deep instead of shallow going deep on one thing i have a few things to say about this but the first most obvious one is that if we narrow our focus into one area of playing we will see rapid results we'll actually feel uh really good about ourselves it's it's calming and kind of an ego booster in a good way right it's satisfying to say wow when when i actually put my mind to it on one thing, look at what happens. And I think we've all experienced this at various points in our life, whether it's, uh-oh, I have to work on painting, you know, my friend's house this weekend, and I better just, all my focus goes on that because they need me to be done at the certain, I don't know, any project you've done where it just comes down to the wire and you realize, whoa, that made me feel alive. That two days, that three days, that one day, that week of, taking this one thing really seriously, this deadline. So that's an example in life. And I think that happens to us. You know, we get into the moment, we get into um, being absorbed with something. Well, if we take this intentionally with our guitar playing and just say, well, what if I put my deliberate practice, my focused goal oriented practice, even if that is half an hour a day, which is a great goal to, you can make amazing progress practicing half an hour a day and you focus it in on one skill or one one style or one genre, and maybe you're already doing this, but again, you're hearing this from me who's interested in all these different things. Um, it is fantastic to see the results that we get. And this is just so, it's so comforting because all of the doubts that we have about maybe I don't have what it takes or maybe, you know, 
maybe there's some natural skill level that guitarists need and, and do I have that or not? Or, you know, I'm not as good as I want to be and all of this stuff. Well, getting focused in on one thing and seeing it work can help us feel, oh, cool. I, I actually maybe can be good at this or maybe I actually sound sounded pretty good yesterday. I'm going to listen to that recording. I recorded on my phone again, um, instead of five minutes of this, five minutes of this, little bit of this, little bit of this, which is so hard to ever feel good about that. So interestingly, when we're focusing on one particular thing, uh, we're focusing on it at a higher level and we are therefore probably doing more difficult, uh, or executing more difficult things, more difficult pieces of music or exercises or whatever we are working on. But what I notice is that it all feels a million times easier. It actually feels easier. It doesn't feel intimidating. And we're working at a higher level, higher level, higher level, harder thing, next thing, next thing. But it feels easier because we have this path that we're on. We have this one foot in front of the other and we are staying focused with you know one particular goal. So instead of it being harder and we're working on harder stuff, it's so much easier. And Another thing that I notice that happens for myself when I do this, when I go through phases of this, is that it's so much easier to ignore all of the noise that's out there, all of the, there's so much we are exposed to, and it's really hard to avoid it, you know, especially online, right? See somebody doing something, hear something else, hear something else, hear something else. Well, with this conscious choice and starting to get the ball rolling, starting to have it build up with some particular focused goal. And this can be just for some period of time. It doesn't have to be for the rest of your life, right? Just one style or genre or goal at a time. I feel like that intentionality helps immensely with ignoring uh, when other people are doing something different that we're like, oh, that's inspiring, but I'm getting so much benefit out of focusing on this other thing and I feel so much better about myself with it. It's easier to not get triggered by that. It's easier to uh, ignore it and just let it be what it is and say, no, that's not the thing I'm doing right now. That's not the thing I'm working on right now. Whereas this other kind of unintentional scattered mindset of trying to be good at everything, uh, I think seeing and hearing things out in the world triggers us every time. Oh, it was, no, it's supposed to be that. Oh, no, I'm supposed to do that. Oh, no, I'm supposed to do that. Instead of, oh, no, that's not my thing right now. That's not my thing right now. I Because I'm feeling good about where I'm going with my thing because I've focused so much on it. Here's the most, most, most important part about narrowing our focus, choosing something, going deep on something on purpose. And this is, again, just my opinion and, and just sharing how it works for me. But, because I already shared that I'm someone that's kind of into anything. Um, I believe, for me at least, that it can be anything. That anything we go deep on, let's just go back to guitar itself, right? What are we focusing on? What are we working on? What are our goals? What's the style? What's the guitar itself we're playing? Any of those choices, I think, offer the same level of depth and reward and nourishment and meaning and flow state. It can be anything. There's not a right answer. Um, we can just choose one. We can roll the dice and choose one. Whether for me it's jazz guitar, classical guitar, songwriting, like they all have endless, um, there's endless levels of fascination in there, endless, endless levels of craft to work on. Um, and I find that helpful that there's not, there's not a right answer really. And that you can just choose one for any number of reasons and go super deep on it and get, uh, get this level of depth that we just absolutely cannot access if we're trying to do surface level, um, touch points on as many things as possible. So maybe that's different for you. Maybe you feel a calling towards something that it has to be that thing. Well, great. That makes your job even easier. And maybe that means you're, <laughs> you're already doing this. Um, but I think it can be anything. I think the, the thing we're looking for is being engrossed in something that we're, we want to feel alive by, um, being challenged by being in the creative state of something, by working on a craft, by growing. And this is all possible with anything that we work on. So we don't have to do all the stuff. We can choose something and get all of that amazing benefit and see it get better. And uh, it feels really good. I'll just say as the last thing about going deep here, and then I'll share how some decisions I'm making about my playing and my uh, business and my channel. Um, is that, of course, this can change, right? If you go super deep on something and you don't feel right about it, change it. That's fine. But you'll still have benefited from even a month of saying, well, this is my project right now, right? Just like I talked about the deadlines or, you know, your your house project or something that got you focused. Um, that can happen and you can 
rotate around between these things if you need to. Everybody's different. Do whatever you want. Do whatever you need to do. Uh, but for some period of time, if there is uh, one narrow area to go deep on, I think we'll get all those benefits and we don't have to be stuck with it for life. So for right now, for me, reflecting on all of this stuff that I've been sharing has made me conclude that my own artistic uh, direction guitar-wise uh, is definitely going to be jazz guitar for a time. And I've always been into jazz guitar. I post a lot of videos about it. I, of course I have been. But now I'm going more intentionally focused on it, more deeper on it, ignoring other things more, having my practice time when I show up, just I know exactly what I'm working on and why. Um, and this has already been super fun and, and super beneficial. And the reason that I'm able to do that now is that I'm in a place where I'm not uh, having to say yes to the random any gigs, right? So I don't have to, my pa in my past, I was being exposed to this stuff all the time and having to do it professionally, having to play this cover band, having to do this, do this. Um, and so I would constantly keep up my chops in all these different areas. Um, and now I have the luxury of, of deciding to focus on one thing. Um, and I think I could have done that in the past too. I could have said, I only play jazz gigs. That's what I do. But I just happened to say yes to uh, all kinds of things and kept playing all these different styles. Um, also, I'm not teaching private lessons anymore. And private lessons um, also kept me, kept the door open to all these genres. Any questions people asked? Again, I could have, I could have said I only teach jazz guitar lessons, but I didn't. I just said I, I'll help you with whatever because I could, and it was enjoyable to help people with that. So I'm making the turn for my own playing towards jazz. And this means that my channel and my business, Sound Guitar Lessons, is going to be more focused on jazz. And I know I have some followers that are not into jazz. I know because they email me and say, I don't like jazz at all, but you know, I like this or this lesson that you did because I've done a lot of um, non-jazz uh, videos as well. So for now, um, I will be focusing on jazz. Um, and uh, not just that, I am going to be posting videos that are pretty deep dive, like didactic, step-by-step -step exercise lessons, which also I do quite a bit. But this is interesting for me because early on starting a YouTube channel, I had this idea that, oh, YouTube needs to be entertaining and flashy and three steps to make it easy to do this and everything. I tried, you know, I tried different things, uh, but it's not easy. I don't like saying, here's three steps to make this easy or, because it's not easy. And that's why I talk about, you know, it's not easy. And the best stuff is when we, we take on the challenge and, and work on what it actually takes to get there. My ninth video I ever posted, I posted a video that was this 40 minute lesson on how to master guitar scales, changing keys, you know, in one position and all these different keys. And it was just a bunch of drills. Like it was hard stuff. And three years after posting that, it actually started getting picked up probably, you know, algorithm stuff, algorithm stuff, and getting a lot of views and people commenting on it and saying like, whoa, I haven't seen a video like this on YouTube before. Like, this is exactly what I needed. Um, and that helped me realize, oh, people do want to work on the stuff that it, you know, work on what it takes. And if it's hard, it's hard. And uh, I'm really into that. And I'm really into that with my own practicing. So uh, recently, last video I posted was part one of a chord tones video on actually just the straight up exercises you need to do. Part two is coming next week after this video. That is not easy stuff. It could take a long time to get that down, but it's uh, from the ground up actual drills. Like, like if you got, if you want the answer and you get the textbook or take a college class, like, Hey, here's exercise one, do this. You practice this in this order. Um, and that's, you know, what it takes. So these, these are, this is the direction that I'm going uh, with sound guitar lessons, uh, with the YouTube channel. And to balance it out, I have my beginner course, which I will uh, regularly recommend that anyone who feels like a beginner or is a beginner or wants to start out or doesn't know kind of where to go or how to fill in the gaps or wants to get to the level of understanding where maybe the harder stuff I'm posting uh, is useful. Uh, my beginner course just is the full foundation. It's every, it's all the stuff I taught to, you know, all the variety of students over 20 years of teaching private lessons. Um, so I have the beginner course. I have a bunch of my jazz courses. I'm going to be posting these difficult drill videos on YouTube and, um, and in my own practicing really focusing on jazz and I'm just having so much fun with it already. I'm working on stuff that I've always wanted to work on. Um, and I'm able to stuff that I always knew was there. Like, ah, I know if I work on this in this way, it's going to get this result that I want. And, um, I'm able to 
go deeper on that because of this choice, which means I'm sacrificing some other things. And that's the, if that wasn't hard to do, then everyone would go deep on something and be, you know, working towards mastery, but it is hard to do. So um, I'm able to do that for the moment. And I wanted to make this uh, episode here to share with you how that's going and why I think it's beneficial for you to maybe reflect on it for yourself as well. I do also like posting these talking videos, ideas, mindset, practice strategy, inspiration, motivation, stuff like that. So I'll be posting videos like this uh, maybe once a month or something like that. And the other ones will be the, the hard hitting um, actual with diagrams, guitar and mostly jazz guitar uh, lessons. If you want to play any jazz chord over any jazz tune, any jazz progression with uh, the simplest shapes possible with only as few as eight shapes total, you can play accurately any jazz chord that exists over any tune. Say if you pull out the real book or any lead sheet or any song, eight shapes is all you need to play over any tune. I have a free method booklet called the Any Jazz Chord Method Booklet. There's a link to it in the top of the description. You can get it for free, just a PDF download, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash any jazz chord to get that. If you want to make sure you have at least one physical, easy, movable shape to play over any jazz chord that comes up over any tune, it's a method that really works. People email me all the time and say that they're playing gigs with it and uh, that it's been very useful for them uh, and they're playing with their friends and stuff like that. So get that if you want to. I post a new lesson video every single week and next week is part two of my chord tone improvisation series where we're going to go deep, deep, deep on how to improvise with voice leading in one position on the guitar through changes and nail the changes, as I like to say. Hope to see you in that lesson. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Take care and happy practicing.